Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 5th August 2017. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, and more importantly, how it can help you in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the About menu. Before we begin, let's go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will use Q technical charts to look at commodities like oil and gold, India's nifty futures, and few forex pairs. We'll do the same to analyze USA broad market ETFs, SPY, QQQ, DIA, and IWM. Before going into broad market internal analysis, sector and industry analysis using graphs and QH ranking table. Along the way, we may review some of the community posts in our traders community, and we'll also look for potential trades for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may use the Q&A panel to ask questions, and I'll try to answer them as we go along. That was the last slide of this presentation. Let us move to live system. We start with US oil. We are looking at US oil using backdrop template, weekly chart on the left hand side, and hop on template, daily chart on the right hand side. Last week, we had discussed that USO was overbought, indicated by the stretch dot on top of the candle, and we cautioned against taking any long trade. That was a good decision as US oil dropped somewhat. On Monday, it went up, but for the next four days, it dropped a little bit and moved essentially sideways. The daily chart, traffic light candle color is yellow, that is neutral. It is at value area, at a place where the cyan and the magenta direction lines are coming together. There is no Q trade setup at the right edge of the chart. If USO goes up next week, then it may give us a go with flow trend following long trade. However, keeping in view the nearby memory resistance line in the weekly chart, one may take long trade only if the reward risk ratio is acceptable. The other possibility is that US oil will go to the memory resistance line in the weekly chart and dip down from there. One may look out for that and may use that information to take suitable short day trade on US oil. Let's move to gold. Gold was also overbought in the daily chart last week and if so we stay away from taking any long trade that would be a good decision as the overbought condition went away and gold dropped it is at value area on friday it ended with a somewhat bullish shape candle in terms of the long lower tail in the weekly chart the backdrop candle color remained bullish that is cyan so next week if gold goes up 
and the daily candle color turns cyan then it may give us a go with flow long trade opportunity again there is a memory resistance in daily as well as weekly so before taking any long trade one may make sure that the reward risk ratio is acceptable today let us also look at silver silver had a nice move up just like gold did and silver went up right from the bullish headwind signal it went from lower boundary all the way to the upper boundary where a bearish headwind signal appeared and since then silver dropped it also dropped from the memory resistance line in the weekly chart so keeping an eye on the memory resistance in the weekly and the bearish headwind in the daily chart one could take very profitable short trade in silver based on the closing of this candle we see that on friday it dropped significantly unlike gold it doesn't have a very long lower tail activity was very high on friday so we may look for exhaustion and possible move back up from here if it goes up in the daily chart it may give a go with flow long trade opportunity however it is not so appealing as gold in gold we saw the weekly candle is already bullish that is cyan but here the weekly candle is yellow to take a go with flow long trade we need the weekly also to change color to bullish that is cyan let's now move to india's nifty futures for that we use metastock this is india's nifty futures using q global or metastock backdrop template using weekly chart on the left hand side hop on template daily chart on the right hand side last week we discussed that nifty futures was already overbought indicated by the dots on top of the candle we stay away from taking any long trade at that time this week price tried to go down little bit however on friday it hit the cyan direction line and went up from there it is already at the upper boundary line so even if next week nifty futures goes up and gives a cyan color candle in the daily chart we will stay away from taking any long trade because it is already at upper boundary this week the weekly candle is very indecisive opening and closing at almost the same price so this is probably not a good time to try to enter a long trade in nifty okay i think this was not nifty this was bank nifty good we analyze bank nifty so to summarize again bank nifty was overbought last week tried to go down hit the cyan direction line went up but it is at the upper boundary line so we are not going to attempt any long trade in this let's look at nifty futures now nifty futures was overbought last week this week it came to the value area that is the sign direction line just like bank nifty did and on friday it went up friday already closed very close to the upper boundary line so we are not going to attempt any long trade in nifty just like as was in the case of bank nifty for those who are not aware of the indian market nifty is the broad market index just like s and p 500 and bank nifty is the index of major banks in india so at the right edge of the chart there is no trade setup in nifty or bank nifty let's look at few forex pairs we look at sing dollar last week we had discussed 
that after this very profitable short trade that could be taken at this magenta candle price came to lower boundary then dropped from there at the end of previous week we saw that price was very close to memory support line and sing dollar also displayed a bullish headwind signal in the daily chart based on that we had told last week not to try to take any short trade at that point that was a good analysis because price was effectively supported by the memory support line and it slightly went back up we see that in the weekly chart also there were two memory support lines price didn't touch them but came very close to them and this week price went up there is no standard q trade setup at the right edge of the chart however looking at the memory support lines both in weekly and daily the bullish headwind signal the bull release signal and a very bullish shape candle of friday we may conclude that the next path of least resistance in sing dollar is probably on the long side somebody who is day trading may keep an eye on sing dollar to try to take a long trade for swing trading as i said there is no standard q trade setup in sing dollar right now let's look at australian dollar australian dollar had a very profitable go with flow long trade based on the sand candle then it hit the upper boundary and went up further last week we had discussed that price was already at upper boundary it had displayed a bear release signal also based on that we said it is safe not to try to enter any long trade again that analysis was effective price came down slightly from upper boundary to value area it tried to go below the sand direction line but so far price is holding above that on friday we have a very indecisive candle with long upper tail as well as lower tail in the daily chart and weekly chart we see that for three successive weeks now the candles are having upper tail that means that bulls are trying to push the price up but failing to keep the price up this week's candle was an inside candle where the whole body including the upper tail and lower tail is contained inside the previous week's candle that is not a very bullish sign it is indecisive both in daily and weekly chart so for australian dollar not only that we don't have any standard q trade setup at the right edge but also it is difficult to anticipate right now what is the path of least resistance in australian dollar this is different from sing dollar where we again didn't have a standard q trade setup but the chart looked more bullish at the right edge so for australian dollar it may be safer to stand aside until we have a clearer picture on where the instrument is going so we went through oil gold india's nifty future bank nifty we went through silver also and two forex pairs let's now move to the usa broad market etfs let's start with spy we are again looking at spy using backdrop template weekly chart on the left hand side hop on template daily chart on the right hand side this week we see that effectively spy moved sideways it didn't go anywhere that we can see from the daily chart the traffic light candle color was mostly yellow for the week on thursday it turned red however it had a lower tail friday's candle is very indecisive if we look at activity though we see that the higher activity days are more 
bearish than bullish only friday had a bullish activity day but in recent period we see the bigger activity days are actually bearish that is shown by the activity bar being in red color it shows that though spy is slightly going up or moving sideways under the hood selling is actually more than buying if we look at the weekly chart we see that for two successive weeks it opened and closed at almost the same price that is also very indecisive spy is at pendulum high so it is not a time to try to take long trade in spy which is at pendulum high and is also showing indecisiveness both in weekly and daily what about dia let's look at dia last week dia was the strongest among all the broad market etfs in the usa this week the same trend continues last week was a very bullish shape candle and this week it continued to be the same it significantly went up that is a contrast with spy which essentially moved sideways we see in daily chart it has moved up successively for many days it is already overbought for one two three four five six seven days it is already overbought for seven days price is above upper boundary line so it is already late to try to enter a long trade in dia there is no q trade setup at the right edge of the chart let's look at qqq remember some time ago qqq was the strongest then it was underperforming the market then started to go up again and this week we see again it underperformed the market from the weekly chart we see that it couldn't go up instead the backdrop candle color of qqq turned bearish that is magenta however it ended the week with a lower tail so it is again indecisive we still have some bearish signal again in terms of the bearish headwind that is coming on the weekly chart price close right at the watermark level if price can go below that next week then it may give us a very low risk short trade opportunity if we look at the daily chart we see that price essentially moved sideways just like in case of spy again if we look at the activity bars be it in a period some time ago or the recent days we see the large activity days are more bearish than bullish there is no standard trade setup at the right edge and it is moving very sideways in the daily chart so it may be safer to stand aside and enter a trade only when the direction is clearer if nothing else is known i am inclined more to take a short trade in qqq than a long trade this inclination is also supported by broad market sector and industry analysis that we will look at later now we look at the last usa broad market etf that is russell 2000 etf iwm iwm is the most bearish of all iwm has two successive weeks bearish shape and bearish color candle in the weekly chart in the daily chart it had displayed a bear release signal we discussed in the last class that that could be used to take a short trade using box short trade setup we mentioned that it was not perfect because activity was not very or extreme high however somebody who was watching iwm for a while could see that it 
try to go up to the watermark level both in weekly and daily and every time it tried to go up if it displayed a bear daily signal it dropped somewhat so this bear daily signal on this yellow candle could be taken to take a very profitable short trend at the right edge of the chart price is very close to support watermark level so we are not going to take any short trade right now and there is no long trade possibility also the next trade may come if iwm goes up little bit and tilts down giving us a go with flow short trade setup let us now move to broad market sector and industry analysis i also wanted to ask are you keeping an eye on the sector industry analysis from our website and the trade ideas that are being posted if you did that you would see that there were some very profitable long trades in telecom sector and industry we could catch the exact day that telecom started to turn up that idea was posted it was identified easily using qh if we have time we may have a look at that post and then follow up with some of the charts let's look at broad market internal analysis every week we look at broad market internals using nasdaq composite index on the left hand side nyse composite index on the right hand side both using weekly charts as this analysis is using broad market indices and also weekly charts this is to be used only for long term investing decisions and not for swing trading or day trading just as we saw that qqq displayed bearish headwind in the weekly chart nasdaq composite index also displayed bearish headwind in the weekly chart and just like qqq nasdaq composite index also has a slightly long lower tail so it is we can say bearish to indecisive whereas nyac composite index went up went up slightly but went up and made a new all time high however the weekly candle is indecisive very narrow range candle and open and close at almost at the same price so if we look at the immediate week we see that nasdaq is somewhat bearish spy is bullish to neutral over the longer term of course both of them are quite strongly bullish that bullishness is not reflected in the internals the internals are not able to surpass previous highs and even in the near term we can see that the internals like new high low here for nyse it made a much lower high though the index steadily went up and the same is true for nasdaq nasdaq composite index went up but the new high low made a much lower high so we don't see the strength of the indices in the internals if we look at this week specifically we see that most of the internals actually all of the internals went up all of the internals went up and other than this internal that is up down volume of nasdaq all the other five internals ended positive so we have to conclude in summary that the indices continue to be bullish over longer term using weekly chart internals continue to be weak and for this specific week internals are bullish let's now look at sector analysis using graph every week we look at 
11 sectors now earlier we used to look at 10 sectors now we have added a new sector that is real estate earlier real estate used to be clubbed with financiers from last week we have started analyzing 11 sectors instead of 10. Every week we look at these 11 sectors across three review periods. The red bar represents performance of this week. The yellow bar performance of one week prior to the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to the yellow bar. Together they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. From the sector performance we see that six of the sectors declined and five sectors went up, painting a mixed picture of the market for the week. Utilities is the only sector that is up for all the three review periods. This sector is the best performing sector of the week. It is already up for about one month. So if somebody is holding profitable long position, one may use trailing stock to protect profit. Information technology went up very slightly. NASDAQ broad market index displayed bearish headwind in weekly chart and we saw QQQ also displayed bearish headwind. And we see that technology sector went up but very marginally. That's why I think it may be prudent to be cautious with long positions in technology right now. This is also why I was saying that for QQQ, my inclination is more towards taking a short trade than a long trade, which is different from DIA. DIA, I will not take a long trade. It is already overbought for many days, but neither do I have any inclination to take any short trade. Let's look at best performing industries of the week. We see that four of the best performing industries are related to computer, phone, electronic equipments, and all are linked to discretionary spending. Many of the stocks in these industries are either at Q pendulum high or are not showing any bullish sign in Q charts. How we use this information is we can use Q edge to drill down to stocks. And from now on, we have added that facility from Q edge where we are analyzing now 255 industries, ranking them and using heat map table. We can drill down from each of those industries into stocks. We can copy and paste the stocks into QVital to identify which of the stocks are fundamentally strong, either in terms of optimal pricing or high growth. That is either growth stock or good price value stock. And lastly, use Q Global to look for exact buy point. If we do the analysis, we may find GME, that is, I think, game stock, to be one of the interesting stocks using the Q360 degrees analysis. So let me demonstrate that how I found GME. And I will demonstrate that starting with Q edge industry analysis tool. Let me open that. We are now looking at Q edge industry analysis tool. Every time we open it in real time, it calculates the ranking and heat map table for 255 industries now. These 255 industries are analyzed across multiple time periods starting from 12 months ago, 11 months ago, 10 months ago to one month ago. And then more frequently for the most recent period over 10 days, five days, two days, and even one day. Based on the performance, we apply rank to the industries. A rank of one is given to the industry with best performance and 255 rank is given to the industry with the worst performance. And then we apply a heat map cyan to rank one, 
magenta to rank 255 and the color gradient to all the industries in between. This is the industry analysis master worksheet. If we click the industry sector button, then the data is copied to the industry work area where we can do the sorting and slicing, dicing, filter, etc. Probably one of the most useful view is by sorting it over five days, that is over the current week. If we sort it, we see instantly which are the strongest industries for this week. And we already saw from the best performing industry graph that computer hardware was one of them, computer phone, household electronics, and computer and electronics retailers. These three, and also electronic equipment and instrument. These four are related in some way, they relate to computer, phone, electronics, etc., all dependent on discretionary spending, and they are among the best performers. So instantly we can know that by looking at the cyan color assigned to these industries. We can also read the ranking if we want, but the color coding itself is enough for most part. If we sort it downward from largest to smallest, we instantly see which one of the industries are worst performer. That is useful for swing trading. If we are going to take a swing trade in any of these industries, coal to paper products and further down, which are strongly magenta in the current week, we are not going to look for any long trade in them. We are only going to look for short trade. The exact entry point will be decided by Q global technical charts, but we will only look for swing short trade. That is for swing trade. And for longer term investment, we may look for a pattern like this one for internet and direct marketing retail. It was strong, that is shown by the cyan color over many months, but in recent period, it declined heavily. It declined first from rank 16 to 212, and this week it declined from 212 to 234. That's a large decline within very short period of 10 days. So we may look for top catching short opportunity in internet and direct marketing retail. Similarly, we can find industries where we could look for long term, long positions. We'll come back to it later, but for now, let me sort it from top ranking industries and demonstrate how I drill down from the computer, hardware, electronics, etc. industries and came to GameStop. So all I do is Anywhere I can put my cursor on these industries, it can be on any of the ranks or on the industry name, then either I can click the get stock components button or use the hotkey control shift S. If I do that, then Q edge goes to the universe that is Thomson Reuters and collects all the stocks from there. We can use Q vital fundamental and peer analysis tool now to look at which of these stocks are fundamentally strong. So I just copied these stock symbols and let me open Q vital now. In Q vital, in the input tab, instead of using the root stock, in the manual list column, I simply paste the stocks that I just copied from Q edge and click on the calculate button to calculate the vital statistics, we can directly go to scorecard. And here, in few seconds, we have the fundamental data of these 20 stocks. Let's again review the information that is available here. First four columns, compare the stocks across industry groups. It is not only across this peer group, but across a larger stock group that is stocks belonging to the same industry and it assigns score between 1 to 100. 
for these four columns. The scores with blue color are fundamentally strong. So we can see that Apple's earnings quality is strong, score 72 out of 100. However, Apple is already very high. If you are tracking Apple, you know that after earnings it went up. Subsequent to that, it is not going up anymore, for now at least. However, it is already very high. That has also resulted in the relative valuation score being yellow, that is neutral, not optimally priced anymore. It is already somewhat high priced, but not very high. If it was relatively very high price, then the color would change to magenta, like in case of DDD. In terms of internal value score also, Apple is neutral. So we have a stock here where earnings quality is very high, but it is not optimally priced, neither in terms of relative value nor in terms of internal value. That is expected when we see that the growth data is quite strong relative to peers. This growth data is comparing the stock's performance within this peer group. It is not across a broader group, but just across this peer group. And we can see simply by the color coding, if it is green, then it is one of the stronger. And if it is red, like in this case, that is STX, then we can see that STX growth is actually weak relative to peers. Apple is quite strong. This is also quite strong, SMCI. But if we now look at the first few columns, first three columns, let's say, then we see that we don't have any strong fundamental stock that is optimally priced. We do have WDC with very optimal price. Relative value score is high and internal value is very high. The best possible score 100, but the earnings reliability is poor. So it is difficult for me at least to take a long-term position in a stock whose earnings reliability is low. But still, let us look at this stock and also SYNA. SYNA also has very strong score in terms of relative value and internal value. And from the fourth column, we see that both of these stocks, WDC and SYNA has large short squeeze score. That means if the stock starts to go up, then shorts will be covered and the short covering will further fuel the rally. So out of all these 20 stocks, probably SYNA and WC could be of interest. So we could look at it using Q Global on Metastock or we can use Q Elite on TradeStation. So let's look at SYNA and WDC on Q Elite. Here SYNA, we see that it is very bearish. Instantly we can see from the backdrop candle color in weekly, the candle shape, and also the traffic light candle color in daily and candle shape. So we are not going to look for any long trade. So we started with QH, saw that this industry is strong. We drill down into a few stocks of that industry. We saw which one of them are either optimally priced or has high growth. SYNA was one of them. But looking at technical chart now, we see there is no long trade opportunity. So we are combining industry information, fundamental information and technical information. And we don't see any trade. So we are going to pass it. Let's move to the next stock, WDC. Again, it is very bearish. So we are not going to look for any long trade. So as you are seeing some of these stocks like WDC were at pendulum high and now starting to drop. In case of WDC, we see that several bearish headwinds came and the earnings after earnings price drop. So we are anyway not going to look for any long trade. 
we are going to take a long trade only if industry fundamental and the technical charts align so let's go back to our qa industry analysis tool in computer hardware we didn't find any long trade opportunity so let's look at computer phones and household again we can use this button or use the hotkey control shift s q edge goes to the universe finds all the stocks we can again copy and paste them but i see gme is not here so i probably didn't find any stock from this list as well let's go to the next industry that is computer and electronic retailers click on the get stocks button and we see gme is here so i copied and pasted this list to q vital click on the calculate button go to scorecard and instantly i can see that gme is an attractive candidate both in terms of relative value and internal value and remember this score is not across this peer group but across a broader group related to each stocks industry it has the best possible score of 100 it also has a high short squeeze potential earnings reliability is not high growth is also not high that is expected as I mentioned earlier also, we don't expect optimal value and high growth at the same time. Usually, those are not possible at the same time, usually. So this looks like a good value stock with short squeeze potential. So we came from a strong industry. We look at fundamental, GME is looking quite strong. Last step would be to look at the technical chart. We can use Q Global or Q Elite. Let's use Q Elite. Now, this chart instantly looks different from the other few stocks that we looked at just now. The stocks related to this computer electronic industry. The other few stocks were at pendulum high and starting to move down, whereas this stock, GME, was at pendulum low. How I know? Because the headwind signal bull release signal they are coming in cyan color not in green interestingly after the bullish headwind price didn't go down anymore instead it is going up slowly we can see that by the memory support line thursday it gave a cyan color candle probably somebody could take a long trade based on that friday price went up a little bit because cyan color has already passed at the right edge there is no standard trade setup but one may instantly see that using industry analysis fundamental analysis using q vital and now technical analysis using q charts GME looks like the most attractive stock. This is how I identify stocks in a top-down approach. In a bottom-up approach, I will just run Q Sonar first. And if we do that on Thursday, GME will show up on Q Go with Flow Long Sonar. Once it does that, I will input it in Q Fighter and see fundamentally it is strong. And then I can look up its industry in Q edge. That will be a bottom up approach. You can use both the approaches or any of the any one of them, whichever you are comfortable with. That is how I came across GME as a potential long candidate. Now this is earning session. So it is always better to have a look at the earning state before taking a long position.
we can find it from qvita can go to the basic info tab and we see that for gme the earnings is on 23rd august so it is still some distance away enough distance away to take a swing trade and for long trade one has to be comfortable taking a position across earnings that is also possible so you may keep an eye on gamestop isn't it a nice way of combining based on objective data industry strength fundamental strength as well as technical strength let's go back to our industry analysis so this is how i identified gme let's look at the worst performing industries coal is the worst performer that is across one week however interestingly very interestingly over one day that is on friday it is the very best performer that is the strength and use of QH. we can slice and dice data across multiple periods and see when the trend is changing we will have a look at q edge and from there you may look for long opportunity because it was worst performer over one week but on friday it went up strongly probably something happened on friday we may not know that but we can conclude something happened it may have something to do with somebody in america changing party from democratic party to republican party one of the states that has large coal industry the governor switched party not sure if it has anything to do or not and trying to find that kind of reason is not useful but certainly something happened to make coal industry strongly go up on friday though for the week it is actually the worst performer very interesting indeed we'll have a look at q and after that if we drill down we may find nrp a coal industry store that has probably a long trade potential let's look at q first and then we will look at nrp using q elite looking at q if we sort the data over five days from worst ranking to best ranking we instantly see that coal is the worst ranking industry 255 out of 255 that is over five day period and we also instantly see that over one day period it is actually the best ranking industry that is very interesting it usually doesn't happen like that so that caught my eye and you could drill down to some of the stocks of this industry simply put your cursor anywhere on the row click on the get stocks button then it will get some of the stocks you may use these stocks or you may use peer analysis to find additional stocks so i already knew about nrp because i was tracking coal industry for a while like many other industries so let me just use nrp as the root stock get its peers by clicking the peer button and you see btu cnx these stocks have come click on the calculator to calculate the fundamental strength and weakness go to scorecard instantly we can see that nrp is very strong relative value score very high 99 out of 100 but we can just look at the color blue color internal value also very high 98 out of 100 again we can just look at the blue color earnings quality also very high in addition there is a very high short squeeze potential revenue growth is actually quite good relative to peers earnings growth is not very good relative to peers that is expected we cannot expect optimal price and high growth at same time so this is a stock of interest based on qa industry analysis and fundamental analysis last step would be to look at the technical charts 
And let us also look at technical charts of ARLP. Let's look at these two stocks. Maybe AAGP also. Okay, let's look at AAGP, ARLP, NRP. And we are looking for possible long trade. If it is bearish on the technical charts, we are going to pass it. We are not going to take any trade. AAGP, ARLP, and NRP. AGP probably now, right now we don't have an opportunity. We see that after this very large draw, there was exertion, extreme high activity, and since then price gradually went up. It is useful to keep an eye on exertion, which comes from extreme or very high activity. And after that, if price starts to go up, we may have a very profitable sideways market box long trade opportunity, or if there is an existing support memory and price bouncing come from there, then we may have very profitable bounce long trade opportunity. I don't know if that trade opportunity was there around this time, but anyway, after the exertion, price had gone up at earnings, it gapped up and continued to move up on the day, closing at the higher end. And since then, price is moving slightly down, that is normal. If now price goes up, it may give us a go with flow long trade. Interestingly, if you see, there was a large gap up after earnings but we are having the Q technical charts and we could see that the memory resistance line was there. So unlike other traders, we will not be chasing price, especially in this case because memory resistance was there. Memory resistance, headwind signals, these are very important signals that helps us identify reversal points. Trend following points are identified by traffic light candle color, that is cyan for bullish and magenta for bearish, and also using the movement indicator. But in this case, we see that after earnings, price went to the memory resistance and precisely stopped there. In fact, if somebody is trading option, somebody could sell calls right on this day and make a very large profit. Of course, selling naked call is very risky, so one might sell call vertical and that would also be very profitable. Because on this earnings day, when price went up heavily with gap up day, then the calls will be very expensive. Last few days, price slightly went down, so the short call vertical will benefit from delta profit and also from the volatility crash. At the right edge, if it goes up, we may look for swing long opportunity, but be aware of the memory resistance in weekly and make sure not to turn a profitable trade into a losing trade if you see prices reversing again from that memory line. That was AGP. Right now, there is no trade. It has already gapped up. The next one was ARLP. Actually, this is earning session, so it is normal to see stocks moving up down suddenly because of earnings. So in ARLP also, I think the bottom was around the same time that the last stock, AAGP, created a bottom. There was exertion here also, and since then price went up. There were multiple memory resistance lines. We are always careful about them. And we can see on earnings day here also, it had a gap up day, but the memory resistance proved very effective again, and price came down from there. So using the memory resistance level, we will not try to go long on this earnings day. Instead, we could take a bounce short trade. In fact, we had a bounce short 
trade setup here because price went up to the memory and dropped from there with very heavy activity associated with it. So it was a very profitable bounce short trade, swing trade. At the right edge, we don't see any trade opportunity. Even if price goes up in the daily next week, it will take few days before the weekly candle turns cyan. So we will not have any going through a long trade opportunity. There is no headwind signal, so we will not have any headwind reversal long trade. Neither is there any bounce or box long trade opportunity. So let's look at the last stock that we wanted to look at, that is NRP in coal industry. And instantly we can see that this is very different from the two stocks we looked at just now. It smoothly came down, hit the memory support, not resistance, and going up from memory support in the weekly chart. In the daily chart, we see it is inside a triangle bounded by memory resistance at the top, memory support at the bottom. On Friday, it tried to break above the memory resistance but failed, but still it ended up for the day, 1.2.4% up for the day. So if it breaks the memory resistance and goes up, it may give us a very profitable swing as well as long-term trade opportunity, especially if coal starts to strengthen further. Remember over this week, coal is worst performer, but surprisingly over one day, that is on Friday, it is the best performer. That is what led us to look at multiple coal stocks and NRP was found as fundamentally strong, optimally priced, having short squeeze potential. Technical chart also, it shows it may have very low risk trade opportunity. You may keep an eye on the earnings date. Let's uh, go back to industry analysis. So we covered coal, the surprising finding that over one week it is the worst performer, but over one day is the best performer. Now, two of the other worst performers are related to semiconductor. If we watched last week's market roundup video in the YouTube channel, we already identified semiconductors as the industry where we could look for short opportunity. We did that already one week ago. So using that information, we could be ready to take short trades. Many, many semiconductor stocks dropped this week. So using last week's analysis, we could take very profitable trades. LRCX and AMAT both dropped after displaying bearish headwind signals. Both of them were at pendulum high. They dropped after displaying bearish headwind, either in weekly or both in weekly daily. We look at the technical charts. We can also see using QVital that all of LRCX peers dropped over last week, all of them. And all but one of MH's peers also dropped. Now that is interesting because the peers were found not only in the USA, but in several countries. That shows that we can use the Q edge analysis to trade effectively, profitably, and with more confidence, not only in the USA, but in other countries as well, especially in industries which have a global economic underpinning, like the semiconductor industries, like the coal industries. They tend to move together in all the countries, not country specific. So we could have some very profitable trades. Let's look at LRCX and MAT using technical charts first. LRCX went up very strongly. Semiconductors had been strong for quite a long time. LAM Research is a well-known company. Then here we see in the weekly backdrop chart, it displayed a bearish shaped candle. Price tried to go down, went back up displayed another bearish shape candle, which also constituted a false downside breakout, the cyan color candle and 
this week it has displayed a bearish headwind and fell down heavily. If we look at daily charts, we see that at this price level, we had a watermark resistance price tried to go above that. This was earnings. After earnings, it fell back inside the watermark. So on this day, we had a box short trade setup. It was accompanied by very high activity also. So we had a box short trade setup. Looking at the lower tail, if somebody was looking at the chart at the end of the day, one might not take a long trade at the end of the day, but take it next day instead in the beginning of the day using Q fine tune real time chart. And that short trade turned out to be very profitable. That is LRCX. The other one was AMAT. Applied materials. Also very well known company. This also had a very strong run, had a bearish shape candle, price fell down somewhat, price tried to go back up, displayed a bearish headwind one week ago in the weekly chart. There was a bearish headwind here in daily chart also. And now for two weeks, it has dropped. On this day, we had a false breakout. Price tried to go up, came down, Let's see if there was enough activity. Yeah, there was very high activity. So that made the conditions of a box short swing trade setup. That trade also proved to be very profitable. At the right edge, price is right on top of the memory support, both in weekly and daily. So we are not going to take any short trade. We Q traders are quite alert trader and we like to take the trade when the signals are confirmed without second guessing. And we see over and over again doing that, we end up having many more profitable trades than trades that are stopped out. So both of these were good examples of that. Now I also mentioned that not only these two stocks gave us profit, one week ago, we already decided to look for short trades and most of these two stocks peers also dropped. Let's look at QVital for that. Using QVital, we go to the input tab. Let's get the pairs for LRCA. Calculate the fundamental scoring. Go to price performance. If we look at the percentage change over five day column, we see all of them are negative, except this one that is unchanged. So all of them are negative, though the stocks are in many different countries. Many of them are in US because the root stock is also US based, but we also have stocks from Netherlands, Japan, Netherlands again, Japan again, and Korea. So using QH industry analysis, we could anticipate and take profitable trades in the short direction, not only in LRCX, but in all the peers. If we look at AMAT, get its peers, calculate the fundamentals, go to price performance, look over percentage change over last five days. Again, we see all of them are negative again. One is probably zero, unchecked. This shows that we had many profitable short trades in semiconductors. Let's go back to industry analysis. You can do similar analysis to look for long or short both. We not only look at best and worst performing industries, that is somewhat looking back information like a rear view mirror. It is very useful, but we also look at industries with biggest rank improvement. It is somewhat like not rear view, but what you can say, future looking mirror. We keep seeing that industries that are biggest rank improver often, not always, but often end up being best performer in subsequent weeks. That's why we look at them and we see airlines is one of the biggest improvers. You may look at the other industries and do the analysis yourself, but let me go through airlines. It is one of the biggest rank improvers. JetBlue had a profitable Q bounce long trade this week. 
remember using QH, you could see that airlines is having a big rank improvement during the week itself and using real time data using QH real time you could probably take a profitable trade in JetBlue let's look at JetBlue's technical charts this was a very profitable bounce long trade setup we can see that after attempting to go up above the watermark resistance level price reversed the very next day creating a false upside breakout it had a barely signal it had exertion displayed by extreme high activity so we had a very profitable box short trade setup based on false upside breakout on this yellow candle since then price drop this was earnings and then price dropped heavily and you see price came precisely to the memory support level in the weekly chart and on this yellow candle price closed higher than previous day that is all we need to satisfy all the conditions of a bounce long trade setup so at the end of this yellow candle we had a bounce long trade setup based on exertion based on support which was in weekly chart memory support so we could take a long trade on this day and since then price is going up so using bounce trade setup we could already be in a long trade in an airline stock while airline stock is also improving rank it is probably late to enter long now there is no q standard trade setup at the right edge so if you didn't take the bounce long probably it's safer to wait for the next low risk entry but if we go back to our industry analysis we can see that for the next week there may be low risk long entry opportunities in several stocks including ALGT and ALK these two stocks are having relatively higher growth compared to peers as seen from Q Vita peer analysis how did i find algt and alk i went to qedge look for airline what is here it's easier probably just to filter and we can see instantly that it had a very big rank jump over 10 days the rank was 237 out of 255 over five days it improved a lot over two day and over one day also it improved significantly we could see this change in ranking in real time by opening qh every day and we could use that to enter a long trade in JetBlue. now if we drill down onto airline stocks all we need to do is put cursor anywhere on the row and press the hotkey control shift s all the airline stocks will be retrieved we can copy and paste the data into q vital to find out which one of them are fundamentally strong Again, I will not need to use the root stock, just use the manual list, paste the symbols, click the calculate button, look at scorecard. I showed that this stock ALGT is having quite good growth. ALK has moderate growth. We see that for JetBlue, which is high growth in airlines, the optimal entry opportunity has already passed a bounce long trade setup we look at algt alk and let's also look at luv using technical charts that will give us the exact entry point luv southwest southwest had a big drop from this day which was actually again a false breakout day however there was 
no very or extreme high activity so probably we will not try to take a short trade on this candle price drop after earnings it created a candle with very long lower tail and upper tail and since then price is not able to go down however the weekly backdrop color is still magenta though the shape is bullish if we try to take a long trade now the stop will be below recent low for me it is a bit far away that's why i didn't think of lv though it is a high growth stock in airlines industry let's look at the other two stock leg and travel here also we had a very large drop after earnings it created a candle somewhat similar to lv actually with lower tail and upper tail price tried to go down but couldn't go below the low of the earnings day instead it has gone up on friday it has displayed bull release signal all the movement components have turned bullish in weekly we don't have cyan color that is expected because we had a very large drop in daily but we have a bullish shape candle this week and the low of this week's price couldn't go below low of last week so that is somewhat bullish and if somebody enters a long trade now the stop loss is not very far it will be just below recent low so i thought a lgt has a potential long trade though there is no standard q trade setup do we have one for standard q trade setup we have exertion we have bull release what we need to have is going up from a support either a memory line or a watermark level or a decision line we don't have any memory neither in weekly or daily there is a watermark level but further below current price what we may try is to change to decision template and see if there is any yearly or quarterly pivot line in the daily chart we can do that here we see price came very close to the quarterly pivot line but didn't touch it yet so we don't have any standard q trade setup however the chart looks more bullish than bearish so if i take a trade at all my inclination is to take a long trade let's change it back to the open template and look at the last stock in airlines that is lk alaska airlines all of these few stocks are similar you can see all of them try to go up had a false upside breakout drop nicely from there after earnings it is holding the low it has a memory support now after earnings it tried to go down but it is holding support friday close just above the very slow wide direction line so though it came down somewhat if we look at the long term direction line very short direction line it couldn't go below that it has a bull release signal it has exertion for several days so if it goes up it may give us a very low risk entry point and we have some support from the industry because the industry rank improved very much this week this is again not a q standard trade setup because the weekly color is magenta but both this week and last week has long dot tail so that is bullish we may look for a long trade in alk i think if i look at all these three stocks luv algt alk to me alk looks like the lowest risk long trade opportunity especially if the airlines industry continues to go up and we can track that using qa on daily basis on monday even on intraday basis we can see if airlines industry as a whole is going up if that happens then i think alk will have a high probability long trade opportunity let's go back to industry analysis let's look at biggest rank decliners of the week two of the biggest rank decliners are in renewable energy industries renewable energy and renewable energy equipment and services 
if you are holding any long position you may be cautious and take profit if you are following these classes or watching the youtube videos then you know that using q edge industry analysis we could catch the very bottom almost the very bottom of fast solar this industry was one of the worst performers for a long time then just as the industry was starting to go up we could catch the bottom of this stock now fast solar has bearish headwind in both in weekly and daily that is bearish however it has a memory support in daily if fast solar goes below the memory support that may warrant closing of long positions and even more so if the industry continues to weaken whether industry is continuing to weaken or not we can keep an eye on that using qa let's look at fast solar using technical charts for fast solar we could catch the very bottom somewhere here in the weekly chart the corresponding point in the daily chart was also bullish and it strongly went up i mentioned i think in last class or the one before that we already had about 65 percent profit in fast solar using stock since the entry point you see at the right edge this way the backdrop candle color is neutral the shape is indecisive and we have a bearish headwind signal earnings is already out we can see in daily chart that after earnings it had a gap up price tried to go up on wednesday it displayed a bearish headwind however it had long lower tail on thursday it dropped friday it had a narrow range day inside bud if it breaks below this memory support one may be booking profit in the long position or at least buy some protection using put so we could use the industry analysis that this industry is now one of the worst rank declining industry and in the stock chart we see there are bearish headwinds we will be cautious no need to exit right now if you are holding long position but if this memory support is broken you may be very seriously considering to protect your profit so that was a look at broad market analysis using internals and then sector and industry analysis let us have a look at q edge industry analysis as i said using the industry work area we can slice and dice and sort it across multiple time periods so if you wanted to let's add the 12 monthly period also in the sort if we wanted to know across 12 months which industry is best performing then we can see rank one is real estate development and operation advertising marketing is number one across 12 months but advertising marketing declined since then banking the utilities these were the strongest ones usually for swing trading as well as for catching the turning point of an industry for longer term investment we use the five day period and we identified GME from that as a potential long trade. If we sort it in the reverse order, we could identify semiconductors as potential short since one week ago. And sometimes I sort it over one day. You can do it over two days also. If I do that, then you see one industry immediately catches the eye that is the home entertainment software it was very strong for many months with ranks like one two three four very high out of 255 possible ranking but then it dropped from 3 to 26 and now this week it dropped from 26 to 111 this week but if we look at on friday it dropped very heavily to 253 out of 255 that caught my eye and i wanted to see if there is a profitable short opportunity probably catching the very top and such trades can be very profitable using put options if the stock drops the put options will profit from delta that is the stocks move down 
as well as it will profit significantly from implied volatility increase as the stock drops. So I wanted to drill down to stocks in this industry. And it is easy, just put cursor anywhere. Click on the get stocks button. QH goes to the universe, finds out two stocks, Activision Blizzard and Electronic Arts. So let's have a look at the, these two stocks using Q Elite. We always want to trade a stock only if the chart shows us that it is going to move in our intended direction. Because we only make money if the stock moves in our intended direction. So let's look at ATVI. Very well known stock. Both of them are well known stocks. It had a quite strong up move. Activision Blizzard. However, it displayed a bearish headwind in weekly, several weeks ago. Since then, price is struggling to go much higher. For last three successive weeks, it ended with long upper tail. So it shows that price is trying to go up, but bulls are not able to keep price up. Bears are pushing price down, or at least not letting it go up. Price in weekly chart is just above the watermark level that was created by the bearish headwind. If it goes below that, we may have a more confident short entry. In the daily chart, we had a bearish headwind. It took quite a long time to break above the watermark created by the bearish headwind. And now we have another bearish headwind that created a false upside breakout. After the earnings of our price tried to go up again, but failed. On Friday, price came down. Price is just above the memory support line. If it breaks below that in daily, probably it will also break the watermark in weekly. And we have reversal. We can see reversal activity days. One is green with high activity. That is the earnings day. And very next day, it reversed with very high activity. So if it goes down, it may give us a very profitable short trade opportunity. And now the earnings uncertainty is also over. Let's look at EA, Electronic Arts. EA also had a very strong up move there is a watermark level in the weekly chart price tried to go above that and so far holding it's not able to go down yet it is holding this week closed above the watermark level also here the candle shape is bullish the color is also bullish however if we look at the daily chart now we see there was a watermark level close to the bearish headwind after earnings at Around earnings price went up and since then it is moving sideways. We have possible exertion because there is a very high activity day. We have a bear release signal on Friday. So if price moves down from here and goes below the watermark level, it may give us a very low risk short trade opportunity, probably using put options and see if, if it can benefit both from the price move as well as implied volatility increase. Of course, option trades are always risky. So if somebody is trading options, I suggest to trade that with a very small portion of one's capital. And I also suggest beginners to stay away from options trading using live money. That's my suggestion. We go back to QH. So we came to EA and ATVI by looking at home entertainment software. From here, we had drilled down to look at the two stocks and it caught my eye because the industry was very strong for long period of time, but has declined in rank heavily in recent period. So if we are looking for similar other industries, we see that managed healthcare. This was also very strong for a long time. 
over one day period it has declined heavily however over five day period it is still bullish so one may keep watching and see that if the five day two day rank declines and remember these ranks are calculated every day this five day period is a moving five day period this two day period is a moving two day period so every time you open the tool it will show how is the performance of the industry over five days two days one day etc so if managed healthcare continues to be bearish and the weekly color changes from cyan to magenta you may have opportunity to catch the very top of the stocks in this industry using short trade let's do the reverse analysis we sort it by one day from best rank and coal of course we looked at coal already which is the very worst performer over five days but surprisingly the very best performer over one day natural gas also catches one side instantly it was weak weak very very weak for a long long time however over one day period it has improved significantly remember always to watch for change in color over five day period also to be confident but sometimes if you are tracking a stock or industry or commodity in case of natural gas regularly you may be able to catch the very top or bottom and i could do that on telecom if you notice in the community i had posted my observation on telecom sector industry just on the day it was starting to go up you may use qh for further analysis but let me go to the post in the community let's go to community on 20th july that is quite some time ago this is how the q edge industry ranking table look like based on sorting the data over one day period and you can see that for all these three telecom related industries on that day that was the very first day the rank improved heavily for all the telecom related industries that caught my eye just like the home entertainment industry caught my eye now potential short on 20th july the telecom industries caught my eye as potential long at the very bottom subsequently i followed up and now you see not only over one day period the telecom industries are strong over five day period also they are strong over two day also it is strong even over 10 days some of them were strong as of this day that is 22nd july and I had also shared the charts of Verizon and CenturyLink at that time. CenturyLink looked like this. It had a very nice support memory in weekly. It had a watermark support in daily. It had bullish headwind signal in daily. So I thought it could be a low risk long entry actually right on this day. This day was one day lay but we could take a possible long trade on this day that was my analysis at that time and for verizon this is how the chart looked like at that time we again had a memory support in weekly we had a bullish headwind in weekly the weekly candle color was already bullish and price had a higher high higher low so we could take a going for a long trade on this day if we look at these two stocks now you will see you could make very high profit in one of them and in another price is still holding the low that is ctl for ctl based on the bullish headwind memory support etc i thought of taking a long on this day this too was one day too late price tried to go up but you know earning sessions are somewhat unpredictable price dropped heavily but couldn't close below the watermark support 
that was created by the bullish headwind signals. It has a very long lower tail. On Friday, it has an upper tail day. However, it is also an inside bar. So even if we had to take a loss based on a stop loss just below the recent low, the loss will be narrow. All our trades, we in all our trades, we strive to make sure that reward risk ratio is acceptable. So in this case, on the earnings day, if we had a GTC order, our stop order will probably be triggered and it will go out with a narrow loss. Now, if we look at Verizon today, we had identified the long trade on this day, a go through a long trade, which we took after the bullish headwind and the bullish shine color weekly candle. And at earnings, it heavily went up. So if there was a loss in CTL, it was many times compensated by the profit in Verizon. These two charts I had posted at that time, but these were not the only charts where you could have very profitable trades, both for swing trading. And remember, as telecom was lagging for a long, long time, these were also long-term investment opportunities. The other noteworthy stock in this industry is, of course, at and And here also, we can see that the bullish headwind beautifully caught the very low and from there, price went up heavily. And when the bullish headwind appeared, it actually created a false downside breakout also in the weekly chart, which was accompanied by high activity. Not very high, but high activity. But in the daily chart, we had on this day, very high activity. So using these signals, one could take a long trade in at and also probably longer term investment and Verizon and at and ended up being very profitable trades. Now, if we also looked at their fundamentals, now probably the fundamentals have changed because price moved heavily up both for at and and Verizon. So we'll not look at fundamentals now, but I think they were very optimally priced when I first identified the industry and the stocks in the industries, just as the industry was starting to go up. That is how you can use QA every day to find potential trades which are aligned with the industry's direction. You can do it in many different ways using QA and use QVital to look at fundamentals. Even if you are not using fundamental data, maybe for swing trading is not so useful, but no harm looking at that. Sometimes QVital helps us identify trade opportunities that we were not looking for from the peer analysis. And of course, using technical analysis, we can combine all the three aspects. That is what we call 360 degrees analysis. I hope this gave a more detailed view of the workflow that I follow. Sometimes it is top down, sometimes it is bottom up. You can use both or any one of them, as I mentioned. That is all that I wanted to share in today's session. Thank you for attending and I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Trade profitably and have a great weekend.